The bungling biochemists discovered crystals, but they're trapped in a sea of buffer. He said, my salt water. Can she save them and freeze them and then use them to figure out protein structures? It's the bungling biochemist and Operation Collect Crystals in Crisis. So, when we talked about exocrystallography, um, so more on that in past posts, but basically you have to get proteins to crystallize and then you figure out what the proteins end up look like. So I've talked about how hard the crystallizing part is and they warn you about that, but they don't really warn you about how hard it is to like harvest the crystals to actually like fish them out of the drops of liquid with these like tiny little loop things. So back in 2018 when I was uh, like first starting crystallography stuff, um, and first like starting with all this bumbling biochemist stuff, um, like bigger time. Um, I did this Twitter thread on the bumbling biochemist and collect crystals in crisis. And so today I'm going meta and I'm doing a video about a Twitter thread posted on my website. So either sorry or you're welcome. And let's dive in. The bumbling biochemist and operation collect crystals in crisis. So the protein is in desperate need of x-rays, but it's trapped in a sea of liquid. Can she rescue them? She'll have to face several villains, cold, drop skin, and ice. Is she up for the task? Let's find out. Each protein molecule is very small, and so to be able to locate them, the bumbling biochemists help organize them into groups and link together and order crystals. Um, so, yeah, I talked about that before, but basically the idea with crystallography is that you get these proteins to form crystals and then you use x-rays to shoot them at the crystals and then you get the structure of the protein from that when working backwards from the scattered rays and stuff. And so, yeah, so look back at those past posts if you're interested in that. But first, we need to get the crystals, which means we have to figure out how to get the crystals, which means we have to try out a bunch of different conditions of liquids that the crystals are in to see if they'll actually crystallize. So we're screening in big trays, and I just did a post on that too. But so typically, the, so this is in hanging drops. So you have drops of the protein um, solution mixtures on top of these like reservoirs, which have more liquid. And then, so it's in these drops that the proteins are hopefully going to, um, that the proteins are located in and that our crystals will hopefully be found in. So we have to find the crystals and then we have to fish them out of that sea. So back to our story. Okay, so in the last episode of broadcast of the Bumbling Biochemist, the Bumbling Biochemist prepared our life preservers, the cryo loops we'll use for the rescue. So I'll tell you more about those at the end because I'm guessing some people probably don't care um, about how we make them um, and how we like recycle them and stuff. But basically there are these little, um, these metal sticks with the little loops on the end. Um, and they have different size loops um, that you can use based on like there's some personal preference and then also like what size your crystals are and stuff but they're basically loops on a stick that you then use to fish out your proteins okay so it's time to fish them out so now she needs to prepare herself to meet villain number one the cold the crystallization room is deceptively cold. We keep it at 17 degrees Celsius, which isn't as bad as the 4 degrees cold room, uh, which is basically like a walk-in refrigerator, um, but it still gets cold. Um, so layers to the rescue. Um, so yeah, I put on a bunch of coats. Um, and now it's time to get to work. With the help of Mike the microscope, yeah, I give things names, and his searchlight, the bumbling biochemist begins looking well by well for proteins that followed her guidance and organized into crystals. Most of the proteins didn't and will have to be left behind. So yeah, most of the wells will either have like nothing or they'll have like a clumpy aggregate we call precipitate, um, which you don't want. You want the ordered crystals. So how do you know where they are? She has a good idea which wells have crystals because the plates have been periodically imaged by an automated microscope. So this is our like plate hotel. Um, so it takes pictures of the trays um, at scheduled time points. Um, but it's still important to check manually because sometimes like it is not focused on the right like plane or whatever or it thinks that something isn't a drop that is a drop and it thinks that something is a drop that isn't a drop. Um, so, or it'll get like focused on like a hair or something that's in there. So yeah, so you gotta manually check too. 
Okay, so you find where the crystals are. Now what? So when I'm doing that manual checking, um, I come when I come across the well with crystals, she marks it so she knows where to come back with the rescue tools. So I typically it's like sharpie it. Speaking of the rescue tools, time's to get out those life preserver cryo loops she prepared. She snaps them onto the ends of magnetic wands that will help her pull out the crystals once she lasses them and positions them for easy access. So yeah, so we basically make those. We stick the metal loopy thingy onto a magnet and then that magnet can stick onto this like wand. Um, so yeah, it looks kind of like a dentist tool, but it's less scary than the dentist, even though actually it's probably more scary than going to the dentist because you're trying to rescue all these proteins that are really um, hard to fish out. But anyway, such easy access is crucial because time is not on her side. So these pictures are from training missions because I wasn't going to take a picture when it was when like it really mattered. Um, because time is on her side of enemy drop skin. So this is basically like a crust that surrounds the drop, entrapping the crystals, and it gains strength when exposed to air. So yeah, you get this like stiff skin over the drop, which makes it really hard because when you like go to fish in your protein, then you have like all the skin stuck on it. Um, adding DTT um, to like the buffer and stuff can help. Um, and there's also like scalpel tools you can use um, to try to like shave it off. Um, so yeah, so these tools. Time may be on skin side, but the bubbling biochemist has allies as well, including acupuncture needles and these cool Mitogen micro tools that slide into mechanical pencils. I was so excited when I found these, like figured out that these go in pencils. Oh, apparently I'm taking you to the actual thread now. But yeah, these go in like, they have these different tools and then you just like stick them in pencil tip like mechanical pencils so cool but anyway um going back to the story once she rescues the crystals she'll need a way to transport them to the synchrotron for the x-rays so the x-rays um so the synchrotron is like this um big facility that has these like can make like really powerful x-rays shoot at your crystal to get the structures um, vehicle of choice, pucks. Yeah, so they actually do look like hockey pucks. Um, each puck seats 16 crystals. And she makes note of who sits where. So yeah, so I have like big like Excel spreadsheets. And well, when I'm doing it in the co in the crystallization room, I'm just like writing on a um, printed out piece of paper and then I transfer that to my spreadsheet. Um, now that she's prepared to face two of her enemies, cold and drop skin, it's time to prepare for villain number three, ice. Because when it comes to crystals, protein crystals are the bumbling biochemist's friends, but water crystals, aka ice, are her enemies. Because ice can damage the protein crystals. So we're talking about like, so proteins are actually like 50% or so water. Um, and so that water's like flowing through your protein in like channels. Um, where there's not like the protein and so if that ice if that water then freezes um, you're making crystals in your crystal protein crystal which is not good because it's like your pipes bursting type of thing so but in water in your protein which is not good to keep this from happen ice damaging ice from forming, she needs to get the puck super cold with liquid nitrogen so that the protein freezes before the water molecules have any chance to organize the ice. So yeah, so get it, just like it takes time for our protein to crystallize, it takes time for water to crystallize because it has to like get all ordered. All the water molecules have to like freeze in the same position and stuff. Um, so if we don't give them time to be all ordered, then um, by flash freezing them in liquid nitrogen, then we can prevent the um, ice formation. Um, and we also add cryoprotectants, so like um, things like glycerol, that sort of thing, um, which make it harder for the water to organize too, because they like get in the way. Okay, time to rescue those crystals. Hopefully the bumbling biochemist can freeze the crystals before the room freezes her. Now that she's prepared for the mission, the bumbling biochemist returns to the well she marked as containing crystals of protein in distress. And carefully, 
cuts out the piece of the ceiling they're hanging from. Not just medical doctors or doctors to be used scalpels. Ha ha ha. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I actually thought I was wanting to go to med school at first, but I went to grad school. Very grateful for it. And still get to use fun tools. Um, so you can see here, I have these walls that I marked and I like actually cut, um, cut around the, use a scalpel to like cut around the top because this is a 96 well, um, plate that I set up with like our micros, our mosquito robot. And the way it does it is it adds the drops onto the top of like this sticky sheet of plastic and then you stick that on top of the thing. Um, and so to get it out, you have to actually like cut it out. And this is not an ideal um, setup. It can be hard, um, but typically, so it's not, often what we're doing with we have like a place like these is just for screening. Um, and so when it's actually, it's a lot easier to um, when you have like manually made wells with bigger drops and like glass slides like I showed you before um, those you can just like take off the glass slide which is just stuck on top um, with like grease um, you, so then you just like lift it off um, and much easier but this time I was doing it um, with the, that plate so that's what I had to do okay she now flips the ceiling piece onto the glass cover slide. The cover slide helps her move around the drops as she tries to quickly bring the crystals back into focus under the microscope while the drop skin draws strength from the air. Yeah, so when you're looking under the microscope, your drop is going to be at a, the protein and stuff is like going to be at a different level um, when you're looking at it when it's like hanging upside down on the plate versus when you flip it over. Um, so you have to like refine it and it takes a lot of, um, a lot of practice. Also, I like that that looks like that, like a frowny kind of smiley face. But anyway, she still has to worry about that other villain, ice. So she puts a drop of the solution that contains a cryoprotectant next to the drops. That's what I was telling you about before. Um, so yeah, we, we also use cryoprotectants when we freeze our proteins, um, not just our frozen pr protein crystals too. But anyway, and I have to post on that. But anyway, once she captures a crystal in her loop, she'll give it a quick bath in this solution, which will help keep the water molecules apart. Time to go fishing. The currents produced by the rescue effort can be strong, especially when the rescuer is shaking with nerves. So the crystals often get carried away, and it's hard to lasso them into the life preserver cryo loops. Yeah, so you can see there's like a loop at the end of the sticky thing, and you have to try to figure out, like, get your 3D under microscope orientation, um, trying to get these fish out the crystals with this loop when you're looking through a microscope um, at a really, really tiny thing. And so, yeah, it's hard. But eventually, after lots of training practice, success! The bumbling biochemist captures the crystal. After a quick dip in the cryoprotectant, she snaps it into the super chilled puck, still in the liquid nitrogen. But that was only a single crystal. There's still other crystals in crisis. Not to fear, the bumbling biochemist returns to rescue the others, each time adding the pump to the puck until there are no more seats. After lots of hard work, the puck is full, but the crystals will have to wait for their x-ray appointment. So the bumbling biochemist parks the puck in a puck hanger slash cargo chip for storage. The crystals may be out of the drops, but they aren't yet out of danger. If they're allowed to thaw, ice can sneak in, so the hanger is plunged into a container of liquid nitrogen, aka ice's krypton, to keep it cold. This victory will require vigilance. Despite the container's insulated walls, the liquid nitrogen gradually evaporates. Time, once again, is not on the bumbling biochemist's side. But by refilling the container with ice krypton, liquid nitrogen, every few days she can keep the ice away. For now, the bumbling biochemist can celebrate and drink coffee and sleep, having successfully collected crystals in crisis, and thus ends this broadcast of the bumbling biochemist, Operation Collect Crystals in Crisis. Okay, so that was the end of this first part, and now I'm going to tell you more about how we actually prepare those loops and um, how we can like reuse them and stuff. Go back in time to the bumbling biochemist gets crafty and sticky, configuring cryo loops to collect her crystals. 
So as I was um, mentioning before, we actually make those um, cryo loops, so those sticks on those loops on sticks. Um, well, we don't like make them, make them, but we prepare them um, because the like the magnet part, so the cap and the sticky part, um, the stick loopy part. Um, come separately so that you can use different kinds of loops and stuff but so here's how it goes Going back into my dramatic voice Good news the bumbling biochemist has crystals bad news the bumbling biochemist must rescue these crystals from the sea of liquid They're swimming in before they drown or before a skin forms around the drop dropping them to suffocate as the liquid dries up So yeah, you can see there's crystals and there's also a bunch of like Curdy stuff, um, but yeah, so my task is to fish them out. But worst news, the bumbling biochemist has only attempted such a rescue once and wasn't very good at it. Yeah, well this is, this is, um, April 2018, so I got a little better. This time, can she save the crystals before it's too late? We'll have to find out in another episode. Today, she's just preparing for tomorrow's rescue mission. So yeah, so we went back in time. So I fished them out, yay, okay. But, the rescue strategy. Use a tiny metal loop, called a cryo loop, like a life preserver to scoop out each crystal separately, freeze them, and transport them to a synchrotron for x-ray imaging. The life preservers come in different sizes, so they have different hole diameters as well as different thicknesses. So yeah, where it says like type 10 micron, 20 micron, that's like the thickness of um, the, like the metal and the, like the loop. Um, and so a micron is a... Um, like a thousandth of a millimeter. So when you're talking about like 10 micron, that's like 0.01 uh, millimeter. Um, but yeah, so then there's also different um, like diameters of your hole. Um, so for bigger crystals, you want a bigger diameter and stuff. But you can't just toss in a life preserver to someone in the middle of the ocean. You need a rope to pull them out. So each root each loop is attached to a metal microtube. In addition to helping you pull out the crystals, the microtube also helps you position the crystals for imaging. This means that the tubes must be the right length to place your crystal in the direct path of the x-ray beams. But there's a problem. Different beam sources have different equipment, so the needed length varies. Solution? Microtubes with snap-off ends. The microtubules are perforated at lengths corresponding to the common beam source equipment requirements. So you like snap off the ends to the right length for the beam line that you want so that the stick is like positioning the crystal right in front of the beam of um, the x-rays. But now we need a way to connect the microtube to the imager when they go for it, their x-rays. The different types of loops and tube lengths all have to fit in the same machine. This is possible with the use of standardized magnetic staple mounts, aka cap, pin, or goniometer base. Each tube simply slides into the cap, but it also simply slides right back out. This problem calls for some serious glue. The bumbling biochemist uses epoxy glue to get the tube to stay put. The base also snaps onto the end of a magnetic wand. That's what we looked at before. This increases the rope length attached to the light preserver when the bumbling biochemist attempts her crystal rescue. Because the bio bumbling biochemist is still a lifeguard in training, she doesn't know which life preserver cryo loop style she prefers. It's largely a matter of, matter of personal preference, so she prepares an assortment to try out, leaving in the cap so she knows which are which. Once the glue's dried, it's time to preserve the life preservers. These special cryo vials have magnetic hoops around the top that snap to the rim of the cap to keep them snug for storage. Mission configuring cryo loops accomplished. Stay tuned to broadcast the bumbling biochemist to find out if Operation Collects Crystals is a success. Spoiler alert, we already saw that it was a success. So, after our successful journey, we want to see if we can reuse these loops. So we need to get the crystals out of them. This takes us to the bumbling biochemist in the case of the used cryo loops. So you put all that effort into making those loops, so you want to reuse them, right? Plus, it's not like they're free. Okay, 
So now we're, um, the bomb like biochemists in the case, they use cryo loops. Can't you salvage them to see another crystal? So yeah, so you can see these pucks are filled with, um, used loops, um, that I prepared in the past episode. And then I used those loops to go fishing for the crystals. Now that she collected the data from these crystals at the synchrotron, she needed to make space for more. But the crystals were still in the loops. She could make more, but she likes to recycle when possible, so she put the pins in a sonicator bath. This bath sends ultrasonic waves through the bath, vibrating the crystals out of the loops, with a little help from detergent. So before I've shown you like the sonicator where we have like a tip sonicator thing, we put the sonicator tip into the like the solution, um, like the solution you want to sonicate. So that, that in that case, like a protein solution or a lysate solution, like um, cell lysate. So when you break open cells and then the sonication helps them break open and helps like shear the DNA. So like shred it up so it doesn't get all glumpy in your protein. Um, but here it's like a sonicator bath. So like the sonication is going through the water and it's what you put in the water that you wanted to sonicate. Then she rinsed them off in water to remove any detergent and loose gunk. But was the gunk and the crystals really gone? To find out, she looked at each loop under the microscope, and almost all of them looked good. Mission success. She could, and did, now freeze more crystals. Now for Operation Get More Bean Time. End. So, hope that shows you um, what it's like um, to harvest and crystals, and then, like reuse your tips so I'm guessing this last part wasn't very exciting but hopefully with all the drama and stuff um, you got a kick out of it um, so happy harvesting